Aaron, this one has a Z on it. Tim, yes, it does. <laughs> we brought you, brought you a new track. Well, it's not, it's not totally new, but it's mostly new. It's and it's got, also kind of shiny. It is. So every time my tractor gets dirty, you're going to swap it out for a clean one? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we don't have that many tractors laying around. <laughs> yeah, we do get it pretty dirty pretty often. This one looks really nice. Now, this is the Z. That would be the Kubota. Yes. Uh, so another tractor just like the one you had before. Uh, another Kubota engine, except this is the gas engine. Okay. And because it's the gas engine, you've got a little more horsepower to work with now. Okay. Not going to do anything drastically different than yours, just a little faster, a little more power. More power. <laughs> more power, always. <laughs> Basically, it's, it's going to be the exact same setup as you got before. Yeah, I've got three-point hitch. This one has a hydraulic top link. Hydraulic top link, that would so, be nice. Yeah, that's nice, and you control that with these levers over here. Okay. So one of those levers is plumbed to the hydraulic top link. Yeah, so two rear uh, SCVs. Yep. And two front SCVs, I believe, right? What are you guys doing out here? I see something pretty shiny. Do you see this? I'm drooling over our new yeah. track. Another new tractor. I see something else new. So I brought you something else. A new attachment. We've got the new tractor, but partly why we have the new tractor is because of this. So this is our wide area mower. So how big is it? It's 95 inches of cut. Wow. The overall width is 96, but it's 95 inch cut. This is technically a prototype. Uh, okay. but this is basically as close to production as, as you'll see before actual production. The whole point of this is to just be bigger and faster. We I want, like that. We want to speed you up. Because I love Vinny with a 72 inch, but it takes me three hours to mow our property, which yeah. is probably uh, five how and a half acres. Okay, I was just going to ask, how many acres? Five and a half acres. I'm not going to make any guesses, but I'm going to say you're going to be pretty pleased with how quickly this will go. Okay, well it should. I mean, it's bigger. When we thought about how do we debut this thing, how do we show it to people, what, what are all the things that we're going to do from a video standpoint, we immediately thought of you guys because, hey, you got new property, and lots of space to mow, lots of space to mow. You're in Indiana, nice yeah. and flat, and yeah. you do have some hills. You have you have the, the knoll up by the road, and you've got a couple smaller hills here and there. It'll be a good test for this, and we'll welcome your feedback and see how, how it goes, but this is a great type of property for this because you just have a lot of area to knock out. Some things to trim around. It's really good at trimming, actually. Okay. Um, now, you know, a lot of people see it very wide and go, ooh, well, is that going to be cumbersome to maneuver? Uh, you know, you do have to have literally 96 inches to, to fit through. Right, <laughs> But right. But as far as trimability and maneuverability, it actually works yeah. really well. If you can imagine yourself, when you sit on the seat, it actually is a little bit easier in some ways because you can see more of the corner of the deck. Yeah. And every movement you make with the front of the tractor swings that deck relatively further out from a smaller deck, so it helps you trim even easier. That sounds great. Yeah. I don't see a side discharge. So this okay. deck is, is made as a rear discharge. The rear discharge inherently is, is suitable for this type of deck because it consumes a little bit less power. Oh. And if you imagine trying to take grass from one side of the deck all the way to the other, sending that 95 inches, it slows things down. It's an inefficient process. You get a little bit heavier discharge if it was side discharge. So being rear discharge is more efficient, it's faster. And also, as rear discharge, it's nice for a few reasons. Again, we're going to be selling a lot of these to municipalities, sports, turf applications, things like that, where sure. uh, rear discharge is an advantage because it's a safety advantage. Since you're not flinging it out the side of the deck, can't blow back on the operator, can't hit yeah. something from, from a discharge if it's a harder object. Okay. So as we're discharge, it's safer and a little bit cleaner for the operator. Uh, stuff's just gonna flow back out the back um, next to the roller and the flap back here and sort of hit the ground and settle there. The roller actually is part of the process of how that grass discharges. Okay. And then you've got the flap to cover it so that it doesn't, you know, if, if the flap wasn't there, then the grass would just be blowing kind of straight back and up. And you'll, you'll get a little bit more probably on your feet and probably less on you in general. Well, I don't care about my feet. It's also nice because you're not blowing grass into driveways or, you know, in, in, like into your garden. If you're coming up on the garden right, right, uh, and yeah. you happen to be on the wrong side with the, with the side discharge, you have to turn around and go different. Right. This doesn't matter. This is going to be great, especially between the garden and the driveway where I was yeah. Oh, yeah. deciding which one I was going to sacrifice yeah. with the side discharge. I see one thing that looks different from side to side. Why is this bent? Ah, and that's that a good question. Not. So this is actually similar to the concept on our finished decks now. The one that you have is, is, is very similar looking. Um, by having this wheel placed further inset, uh, you're putting it on this side of the, the leftmost spindle. And okay. the reason you do that is because 
you want the, the strip of grass that you're running over on this side of the spindle so that the lift of the blade has time to pick it up and cut it off and you get a better cut quality. Wow. If, if this wheel was over here, then it'd be easier for that grass strip to be laid down more and have cut quality issues. Okay. And that's why it's not offset on this wheel because it's already on the correct side. Okay. Man, so. you guys put a lot of thought into this. It does play into all the rest of our designs. We, we've implemented a lot of what we learned on other mower decks to build this thing. Cool. And we're really excited about it because it's, like I said, it's a big fast mower. It should get a lot of work done and save people a lot of time. So it's so wide. How many blades are under there? Is it just three? There's five blades. Five blades? Five wow. blades. Here we can show you two. So there's three shields here. We we'll take all of these loose and we can open it up, show you. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Very similar design on the inside to the rest of our decks. You have a kind of a similar belt tension system with the hitch arms, how they interact with the tractor. That's the deck. I mean, it's really, it's very simple in its, in its approach and it should save you a bunch of time. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Saving the time and not being in my face as much. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. You know, Christy, you're not getting much mowing done standing here talking. <laughs> That's true. I guess it's time to try this thing out. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Christy, I was talking with Aaron. I was thinking maybe we ought to try to mow a little bit of the heavier part here, oh. right? There's really two different sections here. The section that Mike mowed for us later, right. probably three, four days later than, than this. Right. And I, I still think it's not going to be like springtime grass, right? I mean, this no. is, it's still fall grass, so it's not very heavy. Yeah. So this is not one of those, one of those times where in the spring, you know, you have to mow every three or four days. And if you miss it by one day, you've just got a mess. Yeah. Right. Aaron, you and Christy have both been soft on this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I've seen you out here and you're just mowing the flat level ground. You're just kind of driving along. I think you're too timid. Okay. I want to try it on something, you know, tougher. Let's try a hill. All right, do it. Because it looks like it, you know, I'm a little skeptical. It looks like it's awfully wide to be able to handle my hill. Yeah. I will reserve my comments till you're done to see what you think. And the other thing I want to try it on is that uh, road ditch that we uh, have shown on other episodes. We've shown trying to mow the road ditch with Johnny and the Kubota and it's you know it's fairly steep for those. Of course we know it's not going to be a problem with Vinny as far as the steepness goes but we're a little concerned about the width of this mower. Is it gonna you know how's it gonna work on that? So. Yeah. yeah I've seen it in videos too so I'll be curious to see how it fits in there. You're gonna let us try it on that? Try it yeah. That's the whole point. Okay. You want to see where it, let's where get it, to it. it can't work. Sweet, let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we see here? What you don't actually see is probably what's more important. In this specific spot, so you see this wheel here contacting pretty close to the ridge, but this would be the, the top of the ridge and you, you would probably be ripping this all the way down if it wasn't for, there's another anti-scalp wheel just like this one on the inside of the deck. Oh. Just next to the blade on the inside that's probably closer to this zone helping keep this deck away from that spot. I thought I was really stressing it by trying to not to have this wheel right on the hump, like you just pointed out. But you're saying since there's another one under there that That's, you cheated. 
yeah, I did. <laughs> I haven't showed you the bottom of the deck yet, but it's there. <laughs> I thought maybe it was the rear striping roller that helps that, that was holding that it. That does up. help. But folks, it, it, we look here and we can't see any even low cutting, right? It's 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 yeah, held it's up perfectly. Good. Yeah. Now of course the end's hanging up up here, but that's okay. I mean, better hang up than scalping. Yeah. So uh, this is. So far, you're passing, Aaron. Well, thank you. <laughs> as much, much as I hate it. I hit a rock. I'm pretty sure that probably just ripped it to shreds. This might be a good time for us to look under it and see what it looks like, Aaron. Okay, so to tip this thing up, I only need the center one open. Actually, to tip it open, you need, you need to open it up to get access to the pins. But don't let it bang like that because you're going <laughs> to dent it. <laughs> so that's actually the main difference between this and the production ones is on this one, if you do that, there's interference here where you'll, you'll hit yeah. in one stop. So on the production ones, there's more of an actual bump stop. But anyway, okay. aside from that, yeah, you open the center one. When you actually go to flip it up, it doesn't have to be open. In fact, it should be closed. It just, oh, has, okay. to be, it just has to be unlatched. Pull this pin. Those two pins. And there's no pressure on them. Nope. They're just safety pins. They're just there to keep the deck from going too far. And then this pin. Yep. Flip that over. And that's it? That's it. So if you just set that shield down now and leave it unlatched. Do so I want the mower on the ground or do I want the mower raised? You need the mower raised all the way up. And then once you have it raised all the way up, then you can use the auxiliary. So what you want to do is put it in the, the highest roller position, which would be the deck in the lowest position. And then once you do that, Now, does the 72 inch have this hydraulic tilt option? It is an option on the 72 inch deck. The only one it's not an option on right now is the tough cut. Is it an option on this deck or is it standard? It's an option on this deck as well. Okay. So. Well, let's see if that rock tore us up. Oh, we got a scar, don't we? Looks like it was just kind of grazing on the bottom. Eh, it did fold the lip up a little bit. Not much, but. This is really handy. Now, how often do I need to clean out my deck? If you're going for the absolute most longevity possible, every time you mow. <laughs> you're like my dentist. <laughs> Floss once a day, spray your mower deck out once a day. <laughs> <laughs> From what I have seen, I think it, it really depends on your storage setup too. So if you're storing this thing like on gravel in a building where it can dry, then you're a lot better off and it's not quite as critical. But the biggest, the biggest detriment to the underside of your mower deck, whether it's ours or anybody else's, is trapping moisture in there. So yeah. if you finish mowing and you're in the spring, especially finish mowing in the spring, drop it in the yard or in the overhang outside, and you live in a humid environment like the East Coast, yeah, well, especially like down, down in Florida, uh, and you just drop it on the grass or something and you kind of seal that deck off and trap all that moisture in, that's about worst case scenario. Yeah, well, we have plenty of moisture here, so yeah, yeah. especially in the spring. And when you, when you drop it back down, there will be a lag of probably three or four seconds from when you hit full extension to when, when it's the really cylinder down. needs to be. So you just, so. the cylinder needs to over. Till I hit a stop. Yeah, until yeah. you hit the cylinder stop.
Christy, that's the first mower we've had that's been able to handle that last corner without scalping. Yep, I knew you were going to say that because that's what I was watching. Yeah, that's why I left it down there. This thing, yeah. I think it passed all of our tests. I really do think that a lot of people will be surprised with how well it does from a scalping standpoint be, because it's not just about the width. It's about the width, but it's also about the length, the corner to corner geometry, um, the hitch geometry, how close it is to the front axle of the tractor. There's a lot of variables people don't think about when they think about scalping or how it's gonna handle. They just think, well, how wide is it? So all of those things considered and, and how some of them are advantageous, I think works really well. You know what I noticed, Tim? What'd you notice? You did that in one uh, swath, one time through. I had to do it twice every time I did it. Yeah, I, I noticed that, and I was watching to see how good of a job it did on the top side where we typically have to come back on the roadside yes. and do another swath. Uh, you're right, it, it covered it all. Uh, also, it didn't throw anything in the road because it's rear discharge. I was just going to say that. I have to go out on the road with the other one and do two or three passes just running the blade to get the grass off. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. So you guys can't complain about us leaving grass in the road for the motorcycles. We fixed it for the motorcycles. That's why we're here. <laughs> From a liability standpoint, if you just you know if you don't see a car that's coming and they don't wait or something and they catch you by surprise, if you got a side discharge, you can accidentally throw a rock or something. It's yeah. I think I may take this. No, it's mine. <laughs> Aaron brought a new mower for me because he saw how long it was taking me to mow the yard. Okay, you win. <laughs> Well played, Tim. <laughs> well played. <laughs> but you know, that's time away from you when I mow. So. Okay, okay. Well, maybe I can help you with one of the subpar mowers that we have in the background, right? Keep them in the shed. <laughs> you know, I noticed that it stripes pretty well too here behind us. Now, yeah. one thing that this thing does not help with, Aaron, is the, my ability to drive straight. Me either. I'm not the best at it. I wish I was. <laughs> you can see my, some of my, my stripes are a little. Like, yeah. <laughs> But this machine really did the job. I, I was even a little concerned about being able to cross the ditch back there. Now it was maybe a little bit more unwieldy, but it's just like a large farm implement. It just takes a little more time to get used to dealing with a larger attachment. Mm -hmm. uh, this thing really does the job. Uh, today's introduction day. So if you've got a Ventrac already and you're interested in such a mower, I, I think it's, it's worth trying out, especially if you want your wife to spend more time inside. Absolutely. I really think this should count, Christy, for flowers and From things Aaron, and all sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, thanks for thanks for coming today. This has Absolutely. been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Thank Time you. with Tim. I have wimpy differences. camera gear compared to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I have camera jealousy, or camera gear jealousy. Yeah.